Hey there, Python trainer Ruben Lerner here. And today I wanna to go through with you the first two questions and answers to the latest Bamboo Weekly issue, all about flu season. It is currently flu season in the Northern Hemisphere. Lots of people are getting sick. Luckily, the World Health Organization is keeping track of this. They have what's known as flu ID. The flu ID data set keeps track of who is coming down with flu and which strain of flu all over the world in different countries, and they've been doing this for many years already. So in this week's Bamboo, in this week's Bamboo Weekly, I asked you to look into this data, and let me actually copy the questions that I asked. So first, what I asked you to do is create the data frame and make sure that, let's just do it this way, create the data frame and make sure that the ISO week start date column is a date time. All right, so to get this working, I created the file name here already as a variable, and notice that it is a zip file. And that's okay, because when we load it up, you'll see it actually works just fine. So say import pandas as pd. And now, how can I create a data frame from this? Well, I happen to know that inside of the zip file, it's actually a CSV file. So I could just say df equals pd read CSV of file name. And what's gonna happen? Well, this string, this file name, is gonna be read into CSV. Uh, it'll be unzipped, it'll be interpreted as a CSV file, and then it'll be created as a data frame. But look at this, we get an, a warning. It's not an error message, it doesn't stop it, we actually do get the data frame. But Pandas here gives us a warning, and it says that columns 44 and 45 have mixed types. What's going on? Well, when we read in a CSV file, CSV is a textual format. And so Pandas needs to figure out what is the D type for each column. And the way it does this is it runs a heuristic on it. It basically says, well, if it's only digits, I'll treat it as an integer, in 64. If it has digits and a decimal point, then I'll treat it as a float, float 64, and anything else I'll just treat as a string, which we call object. I um, mean, indeed, if I say here, df.dtypes, we can see that float 64, in 64, an object, it actually worked. So what is it complaining about? Well, if the file is above a certain threshold, it says, wait, 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 I'm not gonna read this whole thing into memory and then apply these heuristics. Rather, I'm gonna read it in chunks and I'll figure it out for the first chunk. I'll figure out for the second chunk and so forth. The problem is then what happens if some chunks look like integers and other chunks look like floats or some chunks look like strings and others look like integers? Then it gets kind of confused and this is what it's telling us. It says these have mixed types, either specify the D type option, meaning we pass a keyword argument, D type equals, and then we can give it a dictionary telling it what the D type should be for various columns or set low memory equal to false. And low memory equal to false basically says, read the whole darn thing into memory, and then you can look at each column. So I'm gonna say low memory equals false, and we won't get that warning anymore. It will take a little longer, fine. <laughs> and now I look at the D types and no warnings and everything seems happy. Well, everything seems happy except for one thing, which is ISO week start date. That column, if we look at it, if I say here, DF of ISO week start date, we're gonna see that it has strings, it's a D type object, but really we want it to be date times. So what I can do then is say, parse dates equals ISO week start date. And what will happen then is that as C uh, read CSV does its job, it will apply PD to date time to that column, turning it into a date time column. And sure enough, if I read it in this way, it'll still take a few moments there, and then I will run DF, I'll just take a look at DF ISO week start date, and we see now that the D type is date time 64. Now you saw that it take a few, took a few seconds here to read things in. There is another way that I can do this. I could say here, engine equals pi arrow. And if I do that, typically it's much, much faster and also uh, figures out date time columns and you see how fast that ran? It ran really, really fast. But now if I say, show me DS ISO, a DF of ISO week start date, it's still a D-type object for reasons that I still don't quite understand. Basically, that column is still treated as a string when we read in with pi arrow, even though the pi arrow engine is usually a little smarter than that. So I would still have to say parse dates equals ISO week start date, and then it'll do the right thing quickly and easily, and then we get the D-type uh, of date time 64. So now we have our data frame, and if we say here df.shape, we see that it has 1.1 million rows and 52 columns. 
that's a lot of columns, right? What are those columns? And basically it's all sorts of different things that we are measuring, we, haha, right? The WHO, or the World Health Organization is measuring in terms of which country, which year, which week, in fact, right? It goes week by week, four different countries of different kinds of flu. And also shows how many people were hospitalized, how many people died, how many people were in hospital, how many people were out of hospitals, and so on and so forth. Lots, lots of information here. Okay, so we now have our data frame. The second question that I want to ask, though, was a little more complex, right? And the second question is, in each quarter of our data set, starting in 2020, which country had the greatest number of deaths from flu and flu-related viruses and ignore weeks in which the maximum is zero. Well, that's a lot to think about, right? Fortunately, fortunately, we have a few tools at our disposal, including the fact that we now have a date-time column. So I'm going to use here method chaining, right? And not just method chaining, but I'm going to split things up across rows. So I'm going to open parentheses and close them on lines by themselves, and that will allow me to do line by line by line, sort of progressively create my query. So I'm going to start off by saying DF, and then I'm going to do set index of our favorite ISO week start date. Why am I doing that? Well, if I do just that, we'll see that I get back my data frame, but now the index is indeed that column. This is what we call a time series. And a time series is very simply where the index is a date time D type. How does that help me? Well, basically allows me to filter more easily, I think, uh, which uh, week we have, right? So I can just say here dot lock of, and I say we only want 2020 onwards. So I say 2020 colon. Here we have a slice and it's a slice of strings, but it's not exactly a slice of strings because basically uh, this um, is going to be expanded into dates. When we use a slice like this on an index with dot lock, where it's a timestamp, it will find us all the dates in 2020 and beyond. So if I run this here, uh-oh, didn't quite work. I got an error, not just a warning, but an error. And what's the problem? Well, we scroll, 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 scroll down to the bottom and it says value-based partial slicing on non-monotonic daytime indexes with non-existing keys is not allowed. Duh, right? Who does not understand that? What it's really complaining about is that the index is not sorted. So I can say here dot sort index. And now that it's sorted, basically, think about this. There are many, many rows with 2020 as the year. And so it had to know which do I include, which do I exclude. The moment that we sort the index, this becomes much, much easier. It's so happy to do that. And now we have from 2020 through the present. Great. And then I can go and say dot reset index. And now I'm back to exactly the data frame that I had before, but I've chopped off a whole lot of things. Wait a second. This seems like an awful lot of work. How long does this take? And so I can actually check, I can do percent percent time it, and that allows me to time how long it takes to run something inside of an entire, uh, an entire cell in Jupiter. It'll run it a bunch of times, and it says this took 434 milliseconds plus or minus six milliseconds. Okay, that's not bad, right? 400 milliseconds for my life, not so terrible, but maybe there's another way we could do this. And I can say DF, and what if I just want to say, you know what, let's just go directly to ISO week start date and find all the weeks that are in 2020 or beyond. The way that I can do that is with lock and lambda. Lock, dot lock, of course, lets me choose rows and columns. I have my row selector and my column selector. And that row selector can be an anonymous function, it can be lambda. So I'm going to say here lambda df underscore, in other words, I'm going to create a new variable, local variable, df underscore, which will take the data frame that we got. And then I'm going to say df underscore, where ISO week start date dot dt dot year is greater than or equal to 2020. What have I done there? I said, well, let's go into the, d time, d, uh, the date time d type. Let's grab the year from it. And let's just keep the rows in which the year is 2020 or above. And there we go. We get a result. Is that result faster? Is that result slower? Let's do again, time it and find out. And we will see actually that all those manipulations of doing the index, setting it, resetting it and so forth, at least in my experiments before, they took longer. And look at this, they took a lot longer, four times as long. So while it's really nice to talk about indexes and setting and resetting, you have to think about it and you have to check it. And it turns out that this really works really nicely. Great. So now I have, I'm just going to comment out the time it's here. So 
can run it later. Okay. Now that I've got this, what do I want to do with it? Well, we said that we want to start in 2020, yes? Which country had the greatest number of deaths from flu and flu-related viruses? So I'm, what am I trying to do? Well, I'm going to need to figure out countries, and I'm going to need to figure out the number of deaths per country, and I'm going to need to do that, well, okay, um, let's do this here. So, so far so good. Oh, you know what? I actually said per quarter. Yeah, yeah. Okay, fine, fine. We're going to be fine. Sorry, just looking at my notes there. All right, so what am I going to do? I'm going to say pivot table. What the heck? How does a pivot table enter into this? Well, a pivot table is like a two-way group bot. And it allows me to say, I want the rows to be from this categorical and the columns to be from that categorical. So one categorical column is going to be the countries. That's pretty easy. But what's the other categorical column going to be? I want the different quarters, the quarters of the year. Not weeks, which is what we have, but the quarters. How can I do that? And the way I do that is with Grouper. Grouper is a special uh, object that comes with pandas, and it is specifically for this kind of thing. So I'm going to say here the index equals, that means the rows are going to be equal to PD Grouper. And I say here, okay, the key is going to be ISO week start date. I'm really annoyed that the uh, uh, column name here is so long. It's taking me a long time to type. And I'm going to say the frequency equals 1QE, meaning the end of each quarter. So in other words, the categorical column, as it were, that we are using for our index, what we're going to get for the index of this pivot table we're creating is going to be each quarter for which we have data. The columns, that's going to be much easier. We're going to say columns are going to be country, area, territory. Again, not the shortest thing to write. The values are going to be mortality all, meaning how many people died, and the ag funk is going to be sum. So what does this mean? This means I want to create a new table. The rows are going to be the quarters of time in our data set. The columns are going to be the countries. The values in each cell are going to be the sum of how many people died for, um, uh, over that quarter. And so if I run this now, we're going to get this really, really, really big data frame. You can see here that it's the end of each quarter because March 31st, June 30th, September 30th, December 31st, again and again and again for each year. And we see that we have 164 columns. All right, that's great if we want to look at all of the different uh, countries in the world. But that wasn't what I asked. What I asked was, in each quarter, starting 2020, which country had the greatest number of deaths? So how am I going to find that out? I can say, of course, max. And max is going to give me for each country, right, what was the maximum number. So we'll find out for this country the maximum was here. The first country the maximum was there. And we can see a lot of zeros there, actually. But I'm not interested in what the number was. I'm interested in when did that number happen and in which country. Huh, so how am I going to do that? Well, what I can do is I can say, I can say here, uh, dot ag, right? So this will dot ag of max and idx max. And I'm going to do it axis equals columns, meaning I am not interested. Actually, let's do it this way. Let's go back for a moment. If I say dot max, if I say axis equals columns, what it's going to do is it's going to show me for each date, for each row, what was the maximum number, right? So that's good. That's good. But uh, I actually want to know which country it was, too. So I could say IDX max, and IDX max will give me which country. And we can see it's the U.S. in just about every case. But what if I want both max and IDX max? Then I can say ag, and I'll say here max and IDX max, column, uh, comma, axis equals columns. And now I will get for each quarter the number and the country in which it occurred. And we can see that actually the United States was true everywhere except for Afghanistan, all right? And that's because uh, the first quarter of 2025, I don't think we got any data at all yet. Like the WHO isn't that fast. Um, and so basically we want to get rid of everything that has only a zero. So I'm going to once again say lock of lambda df, df, uh, and we're going to say max is greater than or equal to zero. I'm sorry, just greater than zero. I want equal to there. And now we'll get rid of, oops, uh, what did I do wrong here? Oh, zero would help. <laughs> and now we'll get rid of that zero. Notice, by the way, that this dot lock 
and this Lambda, more importantly, are not running on our original data frame. They're running on the data frame that we got back from .ag, which we got is running on what we got back from pivot table, which was running on what we got back from .lock. So this is how method chaining allows us to change and transform and run and filter on just what came earlier and not on the original data frame. And there we go. We can now see that the United States has more deaths from flu and RSV uh, than anyone else. Does this mean that they really have more deaths than anyone else? Well, it means that this is what they uh, reported to the WHO. Whether other countries are keeping track of it as well, are reporting as much, those are other questions. Anyway, I hope that this was helpful and interesting. Um, uh, I got lots more questions like this at Bamboo Weekly, more questions for paid subscribers as well. Come take a look every week, new questions based on current events, pushing you to learn new things in Pandas. Look forward to seeing you there. And uh, if you like this video, share and subscribe and comment. See you soon.